Hello, welcome back. I am Statman Dave and this is a tactical preview of Manchester United versus Everton in the Premier League. That sounds like an absolute corker, right? So why don't you hit that like button straight away and subscribe if you are new. This content is sponsored by My Little Nuts, the fantasy football draft game. If that sounds exciting, go into the link in the description below and click that and get involved and play it with your pals. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but anyway, let's talk tactics. So Everton this season in the Premier League have been a little bit vulnerable from crosses and that's exactly how Manchester United should attack them. In terms of how they played last weekend it was a 4-2-3-1 against Spurs. It was quite narrow in the final third with the front four being quite compact. That's Sandro as the striker, Rooney on the right, um, David Classy as the number 10 and of course Gilfie Sigurdsson on that left hand side. They tried to keep it short so they could pop those little passes together and create opportunities, um, one twos and so forth. But it, what it kind of meant for Everton that tactically there was a little bit of a problem. The issue with the 4-2-3-1 that Everton fielded against Spurs was that two wide players weren't tracking back and protecting their fullbacks, leaving this massive space for Leighton Baines and Martina to cover um, in the defensive sense. If they stayed high and tried to be wingbacks to offer that threat in the final third, Spurs would be in the channels. Harry Kane loves drifting into those wide areas and combining with his teammates to make the runs in the middle. Or if they stayed back, there'd be no pressure on the ball whatsoever from crosses. And that is exactly how Everton fell apart against Spurs. They didn't deal with crosses at all well. All three of the goals came as a result of crosses. Of course, Harry Kane got quite fortuitous with his cross that went directly in, but the issues were there. No pressure on the ball. The crosser had time to pick his man and obviously score those goals. In terms of the big threat, though, it was Ben Davis down the left-hand side. Everton just couldn't deal with him. Martina didn't know whether to press him, whether to tuck him with the fullback, or whether to just man-mark him. It was a big issue for Everton all through the game. In terms of crosses, Ben Davis put 10 into the penalty area, creating three chances and, of course, grabbing an assist. And if United want to beat Everton, that's exactly what they need to do. They need to get both the left-back and the right-back, or alternatively the wing-backs, nice and high at the pitch, into those areas to cross the ball. Because of the lack of defensive work of Everton's forward players, this is where United could really catch some space. In terms of what I go with, of course, Antonio Valencia would start on the right-hand side. Valencia, a former wingman, of course, dangerous in that final third. Good at crossing the ball, finding his man, and obviously assisting the goals. On the left-hand side, though, potentially, I'd throw in Ashley Young. Ashley Young starred against Basel midweek, putting a brilliant ball for Marouane Fellaini to open up the scoring against the Swiss champions. But I'd like to position him on the left-hand side. In the old days of Louis van Gaal's Manchester United, Ashley Young was a great outlet on the left wing, getting wide and getting crosses into the box for Marouane Fellaini. That's what I want to see from Ashley Young, nice and high in the final third, getting crosses into the box. As well with Everton's system, the right winger uh, in the 4-2-3-1 didn't track back. Sandro and Rooney kept switching positions, the fluidity was quite nice in the final third, but it meant that defensively one of those players needed to trap back, and they just weren't doing that through the whole game, which obviously gave Ben Davis that big space, and that's exactly the space that Ashley Young can get himself into. Alternatively, if Everton go with the shape that they played in the second half against Spurs, the 4-4-2 diamond, it'll be a Drissy Gay that will be coming out to that left wing to shuttle out and block uh, Ashley Young's crosses, which consequently will open up space in the little pocket for either Henrik Mkhitaryan and Juan Mata to pick the ball up and play through balls. United, it'll be vastly important to get both fullbacks forward, get crosses into the penalty area. The other issue with Everton's defence is that they look like they were so used to playing a back three at centre-back. The space between Michael Keane and Ashley Williams against Tottenham was too big. If United have that same space, you're thinking the likes of Romelu Lukaku, uh, Marcus Rashford coming in from that left wing, and then Marouane Fellaini's late run from midfield could cause all sorts of problems. With those three guys attacking that space, the likes of Mkhitaryan and Juan Mata need to be alive to the knockdown. There's been times this season where Marouane Fellaini against Basel and Lukaku against West Ham that have won really good aerial duels in the penalty area and knocked the ball back into the penalty spot for a teammate to come onto it and there's been no player there. So I want to see from Mkhitaryan, from Juan Mata, attacking that space, looking for the knockdowns after the cross has come in. Or, you know, if Everton do clear it out, I want to see those guys receiving the ball, recycling the possession, getting it back out wide and getting the crosses into the box. It's going to be all about crossing against Everton getting the balls into the penalty area, gambling and scoring the goals. But anyway, let's talk about My Little Nuts. So My Little Nuts is a fantasy football draft game. I've roped in my pal Stephen Alson, Adam McCall and of course Paul from Rankcast uh, to uh, get into a little bit of a league. So the draft system is set up and you have to bid on players in the Premier League. You have to make a squad of 18 players minimum. That's midfielders, goalkeepers, defenders and of course attackers. I went bold. I put all my money on the two guys that are lighting up the Premier League at the moment. That's Lukaku and Harry Kane. In the first round, I spend a combined £201 million out of my £500 million budget to bring those two guys to Darren Fletcher United. 
In terms of the second round of the draft, I picked up Lacazette as well. I'm very happy with my selection. So my team will line up with a front three of Lacazette, Lukaku and of course Harry Kane supported by Eden Hazard and Coutinho in central midfield. What a team I've got. Anyway, my little nuts is a, is a mixture between fantasy football and a little bit football manager-esque. So in our league we're playing each other two times. There's two ways to score in my little nuts. Of course, real goals in real life count towards your team's goals. But also you can score goals through like sort of a match simulator fantasy football slash football manager type model where the players that are on your side they get a rating out of 10 that is powered by real life statistics and of course if you're getting a higher rating your team's going to score my little nuts goals anyway if you haven't check out my little nuts the link is in the description below real fun game i'm enjoying that i've dominated the transfer window anyway let's get back to the tactics on to number two the 352 could be a real option against everton Tottenham lined up in a 3-5-2 in the last Premier League game and really controlled it from start to finish. The three centre-halves gave them a great platform out of the back to thread those balls into midfield. Of course, the wing-backs were the two key men in the game, creating five chances between them. And of course, the fluid from four and away with uh, Sissoko, uh, Christian Eriksen supporting Deli Alli and Harry Kane up front. That's exactly how United could line up. We've seen the 3-5-2 against Real Madrid in the Super Cup and we saw it in pre-season. What I'm thinking here is you throw Lukaku up and you throw Marcus Rashford up against the Everton centre-halves. They both look very, very dodgy so far in the Premier League this season. In a way, Williams has been a bit too touch-tight with his opponent against Harry Kane. He kept on, you know, man-marking him and getting spun in behind, Kane running in. He does that against Lukaku. Lukaku is going to have an absolute field day, receiving the ball, spinning, and just getting in behind. But I quite like that idea of facing Everton up like that, getting the likes of Marcus Rashford and Lukaku with a direct opponent, and then just sort of, sort of breaking with that pace, leaving two guys up as well in the defensive sense, defending with the back three and the five across midfield, and allowing those two guys to counter-attack. As well, the other thing that Spurs did so well was runners from midfield. If Man United can position Henrik Mkhitaryan as the left central midfielder and Marouan Flaney as the right central midfielder with Nemanja Matic holding behind, that could be a similar thing. Again, because Everton tried to play a high defensive line against Spurs, little interchanges of passes from central midfield off to the striker and then making the running behind really opened Everton up. That could work out for both the Manchester United central midfielders. We saw how well Marouane Fellaini attacked the penalty area and made forward runs against Basel. And that could be an easy ball, Marouane Fellaini playing forward to Lukaku, Lukaku holding it up, and Fellaini making that forward run for potentially a third-man pass from Henrik Mkhitaryan in central midfield. Alternatively, when Mkhitaryan has played in this 3-5-2, he's carried the ball really well, driven through the middle of the pitch. And again, that's something that Everton could get caught out with. Mkhitary driving through the middle, playing a little 1-2 with Marcus Rashford and then looking for a, either a cross or a, or a shot at goal, you know, maybe sliding Lukaku through on the angle. But that's exactly what United need to do. Little combinations between their front four players in this 3-5-2. That's the two strikers and two central midfielders. That's how Spurs unlock them. It was the wing backs getting forward, which United would have in this 3 5 2, and you know, the, they'd have the, the back three that had hold, but also the combination, the quick little play between the front four players. And I really think it's an option. If Everton do go with a 4 4 2 diamond, the natural counter to that system is a 3 5 2. And that's exactly what Mourinho should do. Another thing for United is adopt a shoot on site policy. Jordan Pickford is a young goalkeeper, still sort of learning his trade. There's a few times against Tottenham Hotspur that he spilled shots back into the danger zone. So if United can get shots from range into the goal and have Lukaku and Marcus Rashford poaching on the last man, again, that's a way United could put the ball into the back of the net. And last up, let's talk about a midfield battle. Two former teammates going head to head Morgan Schneidlin versus Marouane Fellaini. The big thing with Morgan Schneidlin and why he failed at Manchester United was because he was too poor in possession. When Whenever a team pressed Morgan Schneider in high up the pitch, he just didn't know what to do. We'd play backwards passes, we'd play square passes, and play United into trouble. And I'd say that Marouane Fellaini, you know, playing as sort of an advanced destroyer, should arguably nearly man-mark Morgan Schneidlin. Whenever Schneidlin's on the ball, Fellaini needs to be on him and try and nick in it in that final third, and then United can transition and counter-attack quickly down the flanks. But it, that's a big, big thing. If United can get to Morgan Schneidlin, can pressurise him, he will start to choke. The last game at the bowling ground against West Ham, that's exactly what West Ham did on Morgan Schneidlin. Arguably, cost United the game. They lost three goals to two, and it was the, the key tactical battle. I think it was uh, Mark Noble that was pressurising um, Morgan Schneidlin deep in midfield, and United just couldn't get a rhythm. That's exactly what United could do, putting Marouane and Fellaini up against Morgan Schneidlin, disrupting their rhythm, but also creating those chances for the counter-attack. You know, is Morgan Schneidlin going to be able to trap Marouane and Fellaini into the penalty area and win the aero duel? Absolutely not. We saw how the second Kane goal that happened, that Harry Kane picked up the ball, played it wide, then made the run into the penalty area. Morgan Schneiderlin didn't track him at all. So Marouane Fellaini, in a tactical sense, is going to be huge against Morgan Schneiderlin. 
But anyway, guys, if you haven't, make sure to check out my little nuts. The link is in the description below. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new, and of course, like the video. Over and out. See you later. Goodbye.